Welcome to another video. Let's talk about Graham's number. It is a huge number. It is so big, you cannot imagine the number. It hurts your brain to think of what it is. Now, because you don't know what it is, you may not feel the pain of imagining Graham's number. But as soon as this video gets to where we talk about the actual number, you will understand that it hurts. Why is this interesting? Well, this number is interesting because it was um, in the Guinness Book of Records at some point, and still until now, as the biggest number that was actually used in a proof. And the proof was about a cube, but I don't want to go into the details, okay? But it was in actual uh, mathematical proofs that this number came up by a mathematician called Graham. Recent mathematicians have been able to improve on the proof and bring the number down. And when I say bring it down, make it smaller, it doesn't mean that numbers are still reasonably small. They're still huge numbers, just not as big as Graham's number. So what exactly is Graham's number? Now, Graham's number is gradually built because you have to build it from the smallest to the biggest. And then when we get to the biggest, we say, okay, this is Graham's number. So what is the smallest number involved in Graham's number? It is this number. It is three. We're going to call this G1, the very first um, step in computing Graham's number is G1, and it is three with four arrows between two threes. Now we're gonna come back to what this number is. This operation with four arrows, it's called hexation. Okay, it is the sixth hyper operation. Now, what are hyperoperations? Let me quickly explain what hyperoperations are, and then you're already familiar with many of them, except for maybe two or three. Yeah, maybe two or three. The, the rest, most people know. So the very first hyperoperation, or let's just call it uh, operation, okay? It is, they're usually recursive because they depend on the previous thing you've done. Let's start with incrementation. You see, incrementation is like stretching a number. You're just adding, not adding, you are adding a, a portion or a fraction of it. So you can increase 10 and make it 11. That's incrementation. You can increase three and make it 3.1. So let's say you have incrementation is three um, becoming 3.1. So if you write three point, let's say 3.3, .3, okay? This is a decimal. This is the very first level of any increase in anything. You add a little more, a little more. The second operation is what we call addition. In addition, you will be adding two threes, which means you're adding a bunch of these until it becomes another three. So you'll need about 10 of these to be able to get three plus three. The next operation is multiplication. And what do you do with multiplication? You repeat this a certain number of times. Is the same thing as performing the lower operation three times. So remember, we can write this as three plus three plus three. It will be very important for you to understand this arrow to get what I just did here. The next thing is when you have to repeat multiplication, and that's what we call exponentiation. So we call this exponentiation, which is going to be three raised to power three. You see, we're no longer standing on the ground. Something is beginning to float. And when something begins to float, we introduce the Knuth arrow notation because we know that numbers are no longer sitting on the ground, they're floating, so we can say that this is actually a float. We have two threes, so we can write this as, let's write this first as repeated multiplication. You see, multiplication is repeated addition three times because there are two threes here. 
this is going to be repeated mu multiplication. Three times three times three. We're repeating this operation and we can use Canoe's arrow notation as three. Okay, normal flow. This is exponentiation. Let's go to the fourth operation. So this one is number four and number four is what we call tetration. Okay, so tetration is a repeat of this. We're going to be repeating this operation. See how we repeated multiplication? Here we'll be repeating this operation. Okay, so if I say that, now to make it easy for ourselves, it's going to be repeated tetration. Let's do three and we're going to use Canute's arrow notation and then we can come backwards and explain what it means. So this is going to be three, but now you have two arrows. Okay, and then I'm going to have, I want to stick to three here. What does this mean? It means that I am going to write it this way. You see, I'm changing the notation. So this is three stacked up three times on the right hand side. So this is going to be a tower of three threes, repeated exponentiation. Three to the three to the three. This is the meaning. So where did we get the number tetra from? Well, it's from four. It is the fourth hyper operation. See, the whole of three is added to three. The whole of three is multiplied by three. The whole of three is raised to power three. The whole, the whole of three is tetrated to three. So we go to the next operation. It's going to be pentation. Okay, can we make this look like this? Well, this is going to be three times this is going to be 27. So this is three times, three times, three times, three, 27 times. So let's see if we can write this. This is three times, pop, 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 times three, but you're going to have this happen 27 times. That's the meaning of this. Yep. That's tetration. Now let's do three. Pentated. So the fifth operation, and then we're still not at the beginning of Graham's number. Graham's number requires four arrows. But look at what a single additional arrow has done. Do you know what the value of this number is? This number, 3 raised to power 27, is approximately 7.6 trillion. Let me write it. 7.6 trillion. So let's, let's talk pentation. So pentation is repeated tetration. So you see how repeated, how tetration was repeated exponentiation. We, when we increased on this side. When you get to pentation, you'll be increasing on this side. So it's going to be 3 raised to power 3 raised to power, not raised to power, raised to superpower three. So this is going to be, let me write the Knutha notation here. It's going to be three with three arrows. Okay. So this is what you have, which means if we switch this to this side, it's going to be insanely tall. So look, 3 to the 3 is already 7.6 trillion. That's what this number is. So if we switch this and we say, okay, um, how can we write it this way? Well, it's going to be 3 with a tower that is as tall as this number. What is this number? So we're going to have 3 going up forever. And it's going to be as tall as this. Don't forget that this number we generated just had a height of 27. Just 27 gave us 7.6 trillion. The height of this number will be 7.6 trillion. That's how tall it's going to be. And if you have that number, what do you think the actual answer is going to be? If 27 gave you 7.6 trillion, what will a tower that is 7.6 trillion times high give you. I think this number is called tri 
dry. You see, it is the tetration of three. There's a stack of three here. So this is a huge number. In fact, if you stack up these numbers, if each number is as small as you would write them on paper, it will be as tall as the distance from here to the sun. That's incredibly big. We still have not started the first level of Graham's number. Okay, let's go to the beginning of Graham's number. We need hexation. Okay, get ready for the beginning of Graham's number. It's crazy. So for Graham's number, we're gonna need four arrows. I'm just gonna start, okay? What does it mean? Graham's number says, you see how this has a stack of three? This stack of three becomes a stack of 7.6 trillion threes on this side, okay? Graham's number says to begin the computation, you're gonna have three to the three, on the tetrated to three, tetrated to three, and you're gonna keep going. And do you know how high this is gonna be? 7.6 trillion. Okay, don't try to imagine the number, it will hurt your brain this is going to be as high as 7.6 trillion. I don't know how to write it on this side, but this is what we call G1 of Graham's number. Oh, four arrows, come on. This is the very first level of Graham's number. This is hyper I don't know, this is tetration stacked up like that 7.6 trillion times. I don't know if you can imagine how big that number is um, because already this number is insanely big. It is three stacked up on the right as exponents. How many times did we say? 7.6 trillion times. Oh, I didn't write the number of times here. Sorry, the board is getting full. 7.6 trillion times. But now when you do hexation, it's going to be in this direction and it's going to be 7.6 trillion times, which is insane. Okay, so what is Graham's number? Graham's number says the first computation, because it's recursive, it depends on the answer you got on the previous one. You're just going to compute this first. What are we computing? We're actually computing the number of arrows we need. We're not computing the actual numbers. We're computing the number of arrows we will need between two threes. So we're saying, you know what? Let's start with hexation. We're going to compute the number of arrows we need for level two. So for level two, we're going to say G2 is three. We're going to put a bunch of arrows here and we're going to put a three here. And the number of arrows between the two threes will be obtained from this, which is a tetration stacked up, not this one, not exponentiation, a tetration stacked up 7.6 trillion times. That is the number of arrows I need here. Tap, 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 tap. And the number of arrows we will need will be this many. Let me just write the first one. It's going to be three tetrated to 7.6 trillion. 7.6 trillion. <laughs> three tetrated to three is already 7.6 trillion. If you tetrate three to 7.6 trillion, what's going to be the number? That is the first computation that, or the second computation that you're going to get. So here, you're going to do this. That's the number of arrows you're going to have between the two threes. You're going to get an answer. That answer is the number of arrows you need for the next level. So we keep going. 
until we get to G64. The 64th grams number is the number of arrows you will need at the end. And that's going to be some three, a stack of arrows in the middle, and there's going to be one arrow at the end. And right here, there's going to be a number which is insane, insane, insane. See, that's, my spelling is going insane, insanely large. So you understand that this is impressive. If someone could conceive a recursive formula that gets to this point and, still able, and, still, and is still able to comprehend what they're talking about in a mathematical proof that well, made sense to quite a number of people and was dismissed by quite a number of people, then you know that this was impressive. Insanely large number of arrows for computation. I hope this brought some light to your understanding of Graham's number and what these hyper operations are. And we can go after hexation to heptation, octation, nonation, well, you know, <laughs> just never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.